a very good afternoon to Chad Daylon and Cam McConville. Thank you, Jess. It's all happening here at Sandown at the moment. It's going off left, right and centre. Cam, it's great to have Formula 4 on track and I'm also happy to say that the Cam's Rising Star program is going to be back next year. Four lucky kids could be on the grid. Yeah, it's great, isn't it? I mean, we remember it back in Formula 4 days. Mark Scaife, one of the directors, and Macaulay Jones, one of the original recipients of the foundation. So there will be uh, some scholarships handed out next year, five, I believe, and it's great to see the CAMS Foundation getting back into motorsport. I'll tell you what, Mark Scaife isn't a bad spokesperson to have on your corner. This is what he said about it. So this is a very exciting day for the CAMS Foundation and for CAMS itself to relaunch the CAMS Rising Star program. So on behalf of the board and the directors, um, a unanimous decision to have two young rookies and two elite rising stars. That'll be four $50,000 scholarships offered to bolster the F4 program nationally and to give young aspiring drivers a red hot go. So there'll be a formal selection process and nominations open today. They close in late October. The drivers will be tested in all facets of how they perform. But we're very serious about making sure this is successful for the CAMS Rising Star program. Last time we ran it, Jack LeBrock won the series and Macaulay Jones was the Rookie of the Year. We want that to be at that level. So the CAMS Rising Star program has run internationally and nationally and we can bolster guys like Dan Ricardo, Will Power, James Courtney, Will Davison, Scott Pye, Jack LeBrock, Matt Brabham, a host of really high level drivers. And then at the end of the day, we've also had some great rally drivers with Chris Atkinson and Molly Taylor. So this is all about young, aspiring race drivers, and this is a great opportunity for them as the CAMS Rising Star. Absolutely, it's great to have a former CAMS Gold Star winner vouching for the CAMS Rising Star. Looking forward to seeing who might be on the grid. Cam, you can better believe it, my application is in the mail. This is race two for Cam's Jayco Formula 4, and it's the reverse of yesterday's results, which puts Nick Rowe, who's fighting for the championship, on the front row alongside Tyler Everingham. Watch out for yesterday's race winner, Will Brown, to come flying from row three. Cody Donald, it's his first ever race here this weekend, and Harry Hayek, a nasty crash yesterday, sees him off the back. Well, they're moving up very slowly, aren't they? So Nick Rowe just slowing the field up. Where's Nick Tyler? Rowe, there uh, is. Yeah, Tyler will start second, so it's a reverse top five. So Will Brown, who we sit there on board, on the inside, a few little marbles on the tie. He'll start out of P5. Now, remember, the grippier side of the road is actually the outside here. So a little bit of an advantage. You just want to minimise that wheel spin for Nick Rowe starting on pole position. 15-year-old Tyler Everingham on the front row alongside Nick Rowe with the green helmet. His heart will be absolutely thumping but he's used his concentration to get a bolter of a start. So too Will Brown. Careful, your teammates, boys. Jordan Love sees him there at the last second and yields the spot oh, as no. Everingham heads off to the weeds. What a shame. He got such a good start. Oh. He was into P1, but probably just went in a little bit deep trying to make sure he was oh, well and truly clear. Will Brown That's all the happening. The Will championship Brown. leader nearly spins in front of half the field. Got away with it. Everingham's going all the way to the back. You'll be disappointed. We've got a really good launch. His starts have been fantastic, Tyler Everingham. And I think just went in a bit deep to make sure he was well and truly oh. clear and uh, locked the fronts. And then there's no grip offline. So good for Nick Rowe. Oh. Away he goes. Bit of a battle with the teammates. Jordan Love, Will Brown for P2. Still scrapping, but a really strong start for Will Brown. Fifth up into second on the first lap. Yeah, Brown really driving defensive across the top there. He had to because his teammate just had a supreme run on him. Look at all those BRM cars, second, third, fourth, fighting away. Simon Fallon having his best race, but he's found himself shallow there at the exit of 12. And his teammate, Brenton Grove, his dad was just on track in the Porsche, just gets a run and we'll go three wide. Thank you very much. This is open wheel racing. At its finest, I love seeing some good three-wide action. IndyCar spec down the front straight. And Conroy backs out of it. He had the best line down there. Oh, oh and Simon Fallon's on the outside. So I was just going to say he's going to make the most of this. So Fallon gets through, although it looks like he's lost out. And Joshua Conroy, who's had a really tough weekend. So Everingham now going under Fallon. Oh, work. it's close, side by side. Fallon gave him enough room, although he's just squeezing over now. Wheel-to-wheel -wheel stuff here. 
Tyler needs to tuck in under the gearbox of the cool drive entry. That is slamming the door in your nose. He says, P8 is mine. If you want to back, you'll go the long way. This is Jack Smith swinging back onto the racing line in front of Brenton Grove, who washes off some momentum right in front of Harry Hayek. Oh, oh. and there's nearly contact between these two. It's so, a street fight and Cody Donald in the pits. Yeah, the engine cowling coming off, so some sort of problem with that one. Let's go on board with Tyler. Look at the launch. His head went back. Really good initial launch. You see him looking to the left, looking to the left. He's across. He's now in the lead. What happens? He goes back and just too hot. Missed his braking. So I'd say, if anything, he was just a little bit concerned about where Roe was. He was looking in the mirror a little too much. And uh, what a shame, all that hard work getting a perfect launch. You can see he comes across. So he's actually comfortably in the lead. Now moves back and just not enough brake pressure early. And uh, off he goes. Look, rookie mistake, 15-year-old on board. Jordan Love. Jordan Love. Better start than yesterday. Bogged down a little bit, actually. You can hear the engine RPM die. Whoa. There's Will Brown. Decides, okay, better give you some room. Let's wheel through. I there goes that, Tyler. I love that sound where you can hear the marbles hitting the bottom of the car. So what happens up here, though? Got to be busy. This is a replay. So Fallon on the outside, Conroy on the inside. Why, what happened to Josh? Oh, so that was a bit of a, a speed reacting, I think, to that wheel-to-wheel -wheel contact. Well, Will Brown ran wide as well, but there was definitely contact there. And then looks like Conroy's had a lift mid-corner to try and avoid what's going on in front. With Simon Fallon there, car 27. Good young rookie. It's not over yet between oh, these guys. Oh, he's gone up the inside oh, there. And this will work well for Tyler. Oh, Tyler Gee, Everett. That was a, that's where you expect to be a supercar where you've got doors to sort of throw it up the inside and bang doors, but not in open oh, wheel. Look at that in front. He's got a bit of a double toe here. Go the outside. Go the outside, Tyler. Get it out there. He just rolls out of it. He's thinking, no, I'm not going to have any part of this. I think he's thinking this could end in tears here in front of me, so I might just be in the right spot to capitalise. Oh. They're still going at it, these two guys. Grove on the outside. It's pretty tricky to make a pass there. Fantastic racing between the two lads ahead of him. Grove and Fallon swapping spots corner by corner. Fallon wins the fight. And Everingham now with a great run. Yeah, he has. He's got a really good run here. So he needs to pull out of the gearbox. Will he be able to get clear? He's on the outside. It's a long way around. I don't think it's going to happen. Six gear now. He'll have to lift here. Can't go side by side over the top. Or oh, will he? Or can you? That's oh. a big move. Great move. Although now Grove's up the inside. Oh, and had nowhere to go. What a shame. That was gutsy on the outside. Would have been move of the weekend if he could have pulled her off. Fair play by Grove to go back down the inside. Look at this on the outside here. And look how dirty it is offline there too. Yes. He was through. What he needed to do here was try and block the line. A Little bit cheeky by Grove, but it was on, it was on. And uh, Tyler had nowhere to go there. Awesome racing. That was a staring contest across the top. It was oh, just a matter of who was going to blink first. He did use a fair bit of road, so it was a little bit ambitious, but... Uh, yeah, play on. Play on indeed. At the front, though, it's Nick Rowe leading the second race for Cam's Jaco Formula 4 at Sandown. But for how long? Oh, man, this is Will Brown, who absolutely has the race leader in his sights. Rowe needs to win this race. In terms of the championship, he cannot afford to hemorrhage any more points to the young guy from Toowoomba, who's already picked up a uh, fairly handy race win this morning. In the uh, 86, mm -hmm. we saw that. Drove, uh, drove very, very well, very cleanly. So uh, doing a great job running two categories. Not easy to get out of a road going 86 on a on a R-spec semi-slick. Semi into a single seater, full slicks, completely different, and he's at the pointy end in both. So to be that versatile at a young age is uh, certainly good quality to have as a race driver. And uh, Will's just getting better and better each race weekend. It's Harry Hayek in the Langan Simmons car just moves on through. And that is for P5, Jack Smith. After a full day testing at Queensland Raceway in a Paul Morris Motorsport supercar, 
back in the Formula 4, which is getting more and more confident. Confidence with it every day he gets in that seat. Now Ooh, listen here, here. This, listen. Just a slight lift. I think Will just drags the left foot on the brake pedal there rather than getting off the throttle too much. He tries to keep a constant throttle and just does a little bit of left foot braking just to put some weight over the front of the car to help it turn in. But this just looks like race one, doesn't yeah. it? It's on between these two guys. Will Brown's car won all three races here last year and took pole position in the hands of Jordan Lloyd. A fellow Jordan. Oh, getting picked off by Josh Denton. Denton up into third, so wow, nice clean move. Here it is, top of your screen there. Two BRM boys look straight down the inside. Jordan saw him coming, nice clean move. Putting his hand up for Rookie of the Year. Josh Denton, the South Australian former kart national champion. Fight for the lead is still on. Oh, that's close. I thought we were going to see them into each other then. Bouncing over those curbs. That's a great run out. You can just hear how early Will Brown got on the throttle. But if you pull out too early, you actually go backwards. And Whoa. Oh, I think he's missed a gear. Or just run into the limiter, and that's going to work in Will's favour. He should be able to tow past now by the top of the hill. Rose trying to side draft him, trying to get the advantage back. Careful with that action. 200 k's an hour, change for the lead. Tiny mistake. Nick Rowe gives it up. And Will Brown is looking to go back to back. Winner of race one yesterday is now at the point and he's fought his way through from fifth on the grid, driving like a future champion. Not sure if he went into the limiter. Sometimes you're really busy stretching the gear. So this is uh, Everingham and Grove still at it. <laughs> Tyler now throwing it up the inside. Oh! OK, oh. that was a, probably a little bit of you didn't give me a lot of yep. room, so uh, two can play at that game. <laughs> Tyler just didn't do anything wrong, but used a fair bit of road, and Brenton ran out of road. So very did, similar to what happened at Danny Nong Road Corner. Did well to catch him to get even a scenario where he might be able to pass him again. So that's uh, unfortunate for young Brenton Grove. He will have lost a fair bit of track position out of that one. Two BRM boys are back at it, on board with Jordan Love from WA chasing the South Australian Joshua Denton, making his first year in F4, Joshua, and uh, doing a, well, certainly getting quicker and quicker, isn't he? Now being up, this is his best round so far, up into the top three. Absolutely. His opening round in Simmons Plains was impressive. Whoa, how much commitment do you need across the top? I love watching these teenagers wrestle this Formula 4 car across the top. 1.6 litre turbocharged Ford EcoBoost engines. Bought a little bit of rear lock because oh, he's he swung run. in, but he's got a beautiful exit he and he'll look to pick off his BRM teammate in about a kilometre's time. Maybe about half a car length too far back, if anything. So he's going to wow. start pulling him in now, but uh, yeah, if anything, Denton very strong in a straight line. Oh, a little bit loose on turn in. It is a tailwind down that front straight, so it's not ideal for trying to slipstream. Oh, the left rear gets to the curb and lifts the whole rear of Josh Denton's car up in the air. Conversely, the wind is head on in this part of the track, yep. so he should be able to get a nice slipstream up the hill. So Will Brown, 14.88. Harry Hayek, 14.84, has set the fastest lap of this race. 15.1 for Nick Rowe. Denton, 15.1. But Love a 14.9 last time around, and he's really caught up here, up over the top. So he got a nice little toe up the back straight. Needs to work on getting a slightly cleaner exit onto the front straight than he did last time around. So he just needs to be a little bit closer to the back of that gearbox of Denton. Denton's quite strong off the corner. I think he carries a little bit more mid-corner speed and just keeps the, the engine revs up. He's able to actually not only get mid-corner, but slingshot off the turn, and that just keeps him safe down here from a potential pass. But Love's a little bit stronger onto the back straight. Here's another good little battle, Jack Smith, P6. So a good comeback for him. Got Simon Fallon right under the gearbox. Simon in his first season with F4. Jack Smith as well. Jack did a, a fair bit of testing last year, but decided to debut. 
Jack Smith in the 68. Fighting away with the 27 of Simon Fallon. Race two, Cam's Jayco Formula 4 being led by Will Brown. And this was oh, a very close moment with the pass for the lead. Nick Rowe maybe just getting the rev limiter there. And Will Brown using that advantage. Slingshot pass on the back stretch. That was quick reflexes to pull out there. So I'd say you either maybe ran into the soft cut on the limiter. When you've got someone behind you, you really want to stretch every gear, but maybe just touch the limiter. And you can just see how quickly the car deaccelerates when it runs into that rev limiter. Love just can't quite get close enough, Kenny, in that last sector to be a threat to Denton into turn one. Harry Hayak's about seven seconds behind this little battle here. It's a bit frustrating, Jordan Love. Pole winner yesterday, couldn't convert that to a win. And he's third in the championship, trying desperately to get some points back on Will Brown, who's at the front of this race. So it's all working out beautifully for the teenager from Toowoomba. Oh! Goodness me, these things do get hang time when they hit those curbs. And that is a muddy and look lucky forward to seeing that the slow-mo there. Oh, now look although at that's going to be a uh, hose out. Clean that one off. So Simon Fallon just had a fair oh. bit of mid-corner push by the look. So you can get what's called aero wash, but that's I don't think he was quite close enough for that through uh, turn one. So we need to be careful when he gets to the next corner too. Watch how no, much he's actually air he's lost got. the rear, hasn't he? So he's lost the rear. You can see the lock on, straightened it up, but now he's heading straight ahead, and that's just become a jump. That's just become a jump for him. And there wow. you go. There's a uh, Miguel aeroplane. Well, Rally Australia used to clash with Sandown for the last two years. It's a nice looking car uh, this weekend. Bit of a livery change for Simon with Dream Motorsport, and of course support from Cool Drive as we see on uh, Tim Blanchard's V8 supercar. So this car looks now more like that car in the cool drive blue. Yep. His cousin will be taking part in the 500 as well as the main game drive later today, but this is where it got really dirty. Whoa. That's where for a young guy, I think uh, <laughs> Dean Randall will say, here's the sponge, here's the chamois, <laughs> yeah. go your hardest boy. Jack Perkins and James Courtney can see the funny side to it because they don't have to clean it. And I'm sure they're thinking, yeah, I've been there before. Yeah. A little while ago, but we've all been there before. Particularly James Courtney, very good in the junior formula. Multiple world karting champion. Oh. Whoa, is this Fallon again? It is. He's lost yeah. his spot to Everingham. So he might have just run all four wheels off the back of that kerb. Probably slipped up in his own mud. Yeah, there'd be a lot of mud coming out of the ducks. May even pay being back down no, at P8, so still worth pursuing. Let's, Let's have, a have a look. look. What happened here? Yeah, just yeah. turned in a bit too late. Out in the turf. Well, he's done well to keep it off the wall, though. But very much when you run off the back of that kerb, it kind of sucks you further over. So let's have a look. So he's a couple of car lengths ahead of Tyler at this point. Had a bit of a moment there. Oh, like it's all started there up Oy. on that kerb. And then when he turned in, you see how wide you are on the on the dirt there. How do you get away with that? Getting plenty of drift practice anyway. Oh, this is great car control. That's what it's all about, these youngsters learning how to bring it back from a near certain calamity. Tyler was giving him as much he room was, as he needed. He said, where are you going to go? Said, you just go off and have your own crash, pal. Yeah. Last time down this long back stretch for Will Brown. And this fight for second was building too. All right, Josh Denton just needed one more lap. Can he do anything in the next half a lap? Let's find out. On board with the West Aussie, Jordan Love. South Aussie ahead of him. Who might be close enough here at the bottom. If he wants it, he's oh. going to have a crack at it. Roy lets him go. And that is an unbelievable move. How did he pull that up? That's a nice move. In fact, he had to dart down the inside. He was coming in that quick. He would have oh. run into the gearbox of Nick Rowe had he not tried to slingshot down the inside. So he rolled off the brake to get the car straight and got cleanly on the inside. Aggressive, but wow. well calculated move by Josh Denton. And checkered flag, P2, last oh. lap. And they roll off right at the chequered flag. Nick Rowe will finish third. Josh Denton gets his best result and is looking good for Rookie of the Year. But remember that name that you can see on that headrest. He's got his eyes on the Dunlop Series in the future. He's a superstar in the making. Will Brown wins two from two. And that kid has just impressed me to no end. That was a nice move. Very good move. Last minute, but he pulled it off. Well done, Josh Denton. His best race finish so far this year. Yeehaw!
Will Brown is looking good with two race wins and extending that championship lead. Gee, the boys at the back of the grid had a hell of a fight. Josh Conroy rounding out the top 10 and Cody Donald, unfortunately, just getting in that one lap.